Yeah, I know. Look at us. Who would have thought that we would have ended up back here? Well, me. Like, come on, guys. This show is shit. Right. So we're back here with another Baruto video, and you would think over the last two months since I posted my Baruto is a joke video that I would at least have some positives to say about the show, seeing how we just completed an entire anime canon arc. Remember that, by the way. And I do, actually. Let me not go overboard, but I do actually and genuinely have two aspects of this arc that I did enjoy and was honestly something that I didn't think we were going to get into the show until the Baruto time skip. So there's that. But of course, in the beautiful Baruto writing formula, for every one awesome aspect or idea introduced into the show, we're going to have another 18 episodes of ideas and content that would more than likely melt your brain down into you are a simple salary stick. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. <laughs> The main point of this video overall, as you can see from the title, is why Satara Uchiha didn't unlock her Mangekyo Sharingan. Which, for the most avid viewers of Baruto of this last anime canon Funato art, will understand completely where I'm coming from and why that should not have been the case. With the knowledge that the Baruto anime has given us regarding the cares and the emotions regarding Satara's character, and the pre-established rules of Naruto as Shippuden, that Satara Uchiha should have awakened her own Mangekyo Sharingan, in the finale of the anime canon Funato arc. But even for the most casual viewer of Baruto, or even if you're someone who hasn't gotten around to checking out the show at all, but simply has a general knowledge of the Naruto verse as a whole, will come to the general understanding how Baruto, the show, openly disrespects both his predecessors from lack of information gathering, knowledge, or in my opinion, simple stupidity. But I'll let you guys help me decide, as well as touching base and sharing my overall opinions and review of the Funato arc as a whole. I wasn't going to include a segment engaging the entirety of the Funato arc, but honestly there were some positive aspects of the arc that I did enjoy, and for all the absolute brain damage that this show constantly makes me recover from, and the shredding that I give the show because of that, I figured that some of its positives should be shown in the same light. But remember, it's still Baruto. So let's just get into it, shall we? What is the Sharingan? In order to fully understand the misuse and the misunderstandings that the writers of this anime canon arc seem to have surrounding the Sharingan's usage, skills, activation knowledge, and general understanding, we must first understand what the Sharingan is. With the Sharingan being the most popular dojutsu in the entire Naruto verse and amongst its fans, it's only natural that this particular dojutsu has the most evolutions, a dojutsu specifically attached to the Uchiha clan and its selected members. The Sharingan is a deep love or deep hate activated jitsu, depending on the situation, activated when the user experiences a powerful emotional condition with regards to a person precious to them. Their brain releases a special form of chakra into their eyes, therefore creating the Sharingan. There are five preceding evolutions to the Sharingan, with the single, two, and three Tomoe, the Mengekyo Sharingan, and the Renegon which we'll cover today in a brief overview to really lay out the context of our character in question, Satoru Uchiha. At this point in the show, yes, 270 episodes deep, Satoru Uchiha's Sharingan only has two Tomoe. But what does that even signify? The amount of Tomoe that are displayed in the Sharingan signify the strength of the wielder's power and the control that he or she has over her Sharingan in the state before. When getting down to the basics, as most Uchiha, Satoru first started off by awakening her Sharingan with only one Tomoe. With only Obito and Akachi Uchiha being the only two known Uchiha to awaken their Sharingan with two Tomoe already due to their extreme circumstances and prodigy-like talent. What makes this very interesting in the case of Satoru Uchiha, because while a single Tomoe Sharingan is very simple, only allowing its wielders the instant abilities to read people's movements and the ability to see chakra flow as well as the ability to copy jitsus based on the wielder's own skill level and imitate movements and match the chakra flow of its opponent. It all seems pretty standard when it comes to the first evolution, but this is the catch. 
What makes Sadara Uchiha different and in a way almost prodigy-like in the same case as Itachi is that it is clearly stated and almost unheard of in the entire Naruto verse of a single Tomoe user to have the ability to use Genjutsu, except in the case of Sadara Uchiha, the first Uchiha to ever achieve such a feat, which in reality of the Naruto verse makes sense being the daughter of Sasuke and Sakura. It's not too far-fetched to say that she could be a prodigy or a genius of some sorts. But that's not where we're at in the current timeline of Boruto, are we? As stated previously, Sadara has now become a wielder of a two Tomoe Sharingan, which in reality, like the EMS compared to MS, it's basically a carbon copy of the single Tomoe Sharingan, but now grants its user complete mastery of ninjutsu and genjutsu that will continue to mature and grow with the user's skill and chakra level as well as sharper movements for themselves, and giving them the ability to see the enemy's movements just slightly faster. The main buff comes in the form is that the single Tomoe Sharingan cannot be controlled, and only awakens or activates when its wielders are in stressful and emotional powerful moments, compared to the two Tomoe Sharingan that can now be activated at will, and will continue to mature with more use. The question we're now left with is, why is Sadara Uchiha's Sharingan progression stopped after more than 100 episodes since awakening her second Tomoe? The easiest answer to said question is that maybe Sadara hasn't gone through enough, or hasn't seen anything with her own two eyes any traumatic experiences since her and Team 7's fight with Diva, which, in a way, could be interpreted as true until the final episodes of the most recent Bonato arc. Or that Sadara simply hasn't trained enough or used her Sarangan long enough in order to fully awaken MS or even progress to a point to activate a third Tomoe. Which, unfortunately in Boruto, training arcs are not shown, as in Naruto and Shippuden. And digging into research for this video, Sadara has been shown to at least activate her Sharingan in every major battle following Team 7's fight with Diva, with just her Jitsu usage at a criminally low rate. But with Jitsu usage criminally low across the board from every character of Boruto, there's simply no way you would be able to quantify that answer when compared to other Sharingan users, therefore chalking up that answer to the question to be unknown. With the three Tomoe Sharingan being the most common and recognizable amongst its users in the Naruto verse, as with the second Tomoe, the third Tomoe basically grants its users mastery across the board when it comes to ninjutsu and ability to predict your opponent's movements but as well as the additional buff of basic mastery of genjutsu, to a point where even simple eye contact can put a user under genjutsu, or you are able to break out of other genjutsus with your own will. Now with a basic understanding of the Sharingan and its evolution, this moves us to the true climax of this video, the Mingekyo Sharingan and Sadara Uchiha. With it for a long time being considered the last known evolution of the Sharingan, the Mengekyo Sharingan can only be activated under a certain set of circumstances, as similar with the awakening of the wielders under the original Sharingan. Emotional based as with most evolutions, the Mengekyo Sharingan can only be obtained by witnessing the death of a loved one or killing the person that you are most close to. Which, in the case of Sadara Uchiha and most shinobi of the Naruto-verse, with the exception of maybe Kakashi and Guy, the only example I can find, would be one of your teammates from your shinobi team, narrowing it down to either Boruto, Mitsuki, or newly introduced Kawaki. With the people out there that would say that it could be Sasuke, it has been well established and shown throughout the Boruto anime that Sadara is not genuinely close to Sasuke, with Sasuke even developing a more established bond with Boruto more than Sadara. Sakura could be a character that could be introduced into that conversation as well, and honestly, I wouldn't have any counterclaims to argue you. Sakura over the likes of Mitsuki, Kawaki, and Sasuke, I understand. Boruto? That's another story. With 68% of Sakura's screen time shared with Boruto over the entirety of the show so far, with multiple life and death situations when it came to Deepa, Boro, and others, as well as the emotional talks with Boruto as a whole, it would be easy to argue my point of view. So with Sadara's connection to Boruto established, and the pre-established rules of the Sharingan foretold in Naruto and Shippuden, you still might be asking yourselves, so what's the connection between Sadara and the Mengekyo Sharingan? Boruto can't die in his own show, it's literally called Boruto. Well, my dear viewer, while I thought the same thing, and technically yes, we would both be right, and while the writers might mistake this from time to time, the characters in the show don't know the show is called Boruto. They have no idea that Boruto is the MC of their own lives, 
So following the climatic decision by Boruto in order to kill himself in front of Satara, Mitsuki, and new friended bro Ikeda, in order to stop the war between the Funato and the Mist, it's very evident that all of the boxes are checked and the criteria is met in order for Satara to unlock her Mangekio Sharingan. Whether she intended to attack Ikeda or not, it does not matter what happens in the aftermath after activation. It only matters that Satoru Uchiha witnessed Boruto die, which Boruto told us, the audience, the same episode, that this was no fluke and that he truly intended on dying there on that ship and not being saved by Ikeda. So why is that? Is it chalked up that Sakura is really the most important person to Satara? As stated before, I would heavily argue against that stance. And with the only other option that I've heard suggested has come from my brother with the excuse of the phrase anime canon. Remember when I told you guys to remember that? Well, anime canon is exactly what it sounds like. Canonized events and character development that just doesn't come from its main source material. In this case, the manga. Otherwise, canon is canon. So if the criteria is met, then why aren't the expectations being fulfilled? And that's the questions that I leave for you guys. In my opinion, Satoru Uchiha should have unlocked her Mengekyo Sharingan at the finale of this Funato art, but I do want to hear you guys' thoughts. So I realized that this video was going to come out much longer than I expected if I actually did even do a brief recap and review of the entirety of the Funato arc. And as I said before, there were like two or three aspects of the arc that I did end up liking. And I hope it's carried on by certain characters in the future seeing how this arc was anime canon. I just don't want certain growths from Boruto, Metal Lee, Ikeda, Satara, and Buntan to just be thrown to the wayside and forgotten in the future of the show. And if I'm going to talk about the arc, I might as well try to give it some justice that it gave me, as well as the maximum amount of brain damage that I can tolerate. Comment down below why you guys think Satara didn't unlock her Mengekyo Sharingan. Man, I would honestly love if someone could come up and find a real credible answer to the question, because otherwise I just have to chalk it up again to the writers not doing any credible research, or just blatantly disrespecting the obviously superior predecessors once again. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button because it is surely appreciated, and subscribe to the channel to check out some of the other videos I've made. I could have already talked about your favorite movie or TV show, or in this case, anime. Definitely go check out that last Baruto video I made. Man, I was really angry in that. Not like this. This is logical. But that's all the words I got for you today, so bye.